Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. This specific presentation acts as an introduction to the process we know as fat metabolism. Over the preceding weeks, I will be presenting a number of episodes looking at the process in which fat is broken down and used as an energy source within the body. In addition, I will also look at the process by which fat is created and stored. Now, fat metabolism can be divided into two main categories, catabolic and anabolic. When someone consumes an excess amount of refined carbohydrates, processed foods, and has a lack of dietary fiber from the food that they consume, this can contribute to a variety of preventable health issues. In addition, following a sedentary lifestyle comprising of hours in front of a screen increases the likelihood that they will put on weight. In short, they favor an anabolic state in which excess energy from such foods is stored within fat cells called adipocytes. Within these cells, excess dietary energy is stored in the form of triacylglycerols, commonly abbreviated into TAGs. While adipocytes have the capacity to accumulate fat droplets through their expansion, it was often thought that this was the only mechanism by which fat could be stored. Recent research, however, has discovered that such cells have the capacity to multiply through a process called mitosis, increasing their potential for further fat accumulation and therefore storage. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, we have catabolic fat metabolism, which breaks down body fat stores in an attempt to meet the energy needs of the body. A real world example of this is during extended and repeated bouts of physical activity. Now, catabolic fat metabolism can be divided into three main steps. Lipolysis and the release of fatty acids from triglycerides, also known as triacylglycerols, which, as you've seen, can be abbreviated into TAGs. Now, I've already covered lipolysis in a previous episode, so my suggestion to you is to view this prior to my next presentation, as it will help you with your understanding. The second important step is fatty acid transport. And finally, the third and final crucial step involves the beta oxidation of fatty acids and the production of ATP. Well, that's it for this presentation. Now, during my next episode, I will be looking at the role of L-carnitine in the transport of fatty acids formed through the process of lipolysis and how these fatty acids are transported from the cytosol and into the mitochondrial matrix in preparation for beta oxidation. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.